My name is Katya Gutierrez, and I was a Jehovah's Witness for 23 years. Christian and I escaped the Watchtower organization four years ago. The reason that we want to make this documentary is to bring awareness to the fact that the Jehovah's Witness organization destroys families' lives. We know of hundreds of thousands of other people just like us who've also had their lives destroyed and their families taken from them. These are their stories. So we are on our way right now to go and speak to another former Jehovah's Witness and his name is Tyson and we're going to go and listen to his story. So let's go talk to him. My name's Tyson and I was a Jehovah's Witness for 17 years. I was born in northern BC. Um, our family moved around quite a bit but most of my life was in and around uh, the Calgary area. So tell us about your childhood. Um, I live a normal life. I normal kid. Mm -hmm. Celebrated Christmas and birthdays and did all the fun stuff that every other kid did. Mm. Um, that changed once I got to high school and we became Jehovah's Witnesses. I followed my mom and my siblings. My mom was a Jehovah's Witness. Yeah. She left and then she decided that she wanted to go back. Hmm. So at that point we followed, but I had never been exposed to it really, other than the odd time with grandma and grandpa or auntie and uncle, but mm -hmm. nothing enough to think that I was one of them. Right. So, so do you feel like your childhood changed drastically when you had to become a child's witness? Yeah, it was, it was a quick change. Mm -hmm. like it was all of a sudden it was way different because the normal things that I do with my friends after school yeah. or on the weekends, all of a sudden I wasn't allowed. There was always school dances or playing sports, mm -hmm. stuff like that. I wasn't allowed extracurricular, like if you're in a certain class. Yeah. All of a sudden I had to choose my classes according to the amount of time I would spend with mm. kids that weren't witnesses. So yeah, there's, there's quite a few adjustments. So how old were you when you became a Jehovah's Witness? Did you get baptized? Yeah, so I was 17 okay. when, um, 16, 17 when I started to study, when my mom was studying. Mm -hmm. And then from that point, um, I was baptized at 18. And, and yeah, I just kind of followed the norm of the witness culture that you were told what mm -hmm. to do and the timelines to do it. In. And did you get baptized because you believed it was the truth, as they call it? At the time, yeah. yeah. Like, I really did believe it. I tried hard. They would say, make the truth your own, mm -hmm. do your own research. Mm -hmm. But what I didn't realize was do your own research meant do your own research with their material, right. nothing yeah. outside, which you don't really know that when you're young. And you, they say, make the truth your own. And then they give you a bunch of literature. Mm -hmm. Well, if you read something enough times, it's bound to be in your mind is to be true. Yeah. yeah. And you probably believed it because your parents, you know, your mom. Yeah, my mom went to it. Parents. Yeah. My mom went back to it and I had no reason not to at the time. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have, there's no real negative influence. So, and it was always, it was fun too, because all of a sudden I had more friends. Mm -hmm. um, there was girls, <laughs> there was playing sports with the guys. So it was something that was almost like a social thing for yeah. me. So I bought into it. Hmm. So what positions did you have as a Jehovah's Witness? Uh, as a witness, I, st I kind of started out slow and then it kind of arced because I got heavily involved in the service. Mm -hmm. um, I tried to auxiliary pioneer as much as I could, which meant we put in 50 hours a month at that time. Um, then the elders kind of pegged me as a project. Right. Didn't really matter what <laughs> congregation I went to. I was the project guy. Right. 
So I ended up serving as a ministerial servant. I oversaw certain departments within the local congregation. And then as that progressed, I never went farther than a ministerial servant, but I had assignments that um, at conventions and assemblies and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. How old were you when you got baptized? I was 18. Yeah. Do you regret it? Now, looking back, yeah, because it's changed my family's outlook forever. Had I not been baptized, I would never be completely shunned from my family. Yeah, I had a full understanding of what the organization was about as much as they wanted to tell me. Right, yeah. Right? Like, it's it's one of those things where they give you all the information that you need to learn about them that's what they want you to learn, mm -hmm. that tells you you should join yeah. and be a foot soldier for them. Mm -hmm. And that's all I knew. It wasn't until years later that I started doing my own mm -hmm. research. How does the organization affect children? Mm -hmm. Oh, huge. I mean, you were somewhat a child yeah. and you've had children in the organization. So. Yeah. For me, I think that's the biggest downfall of the organization, how children are treated. Mm -hmm. Because for one, they don't know what they're getting into when they get baptized. Like I was assigned a lot of times to around the baptism pool, I'd be on the security and you'd see 10, 11, 12 year old kids as early as seven or eight yeah. getting baptized. And they have no idea what they're getting into. Mm -hmm. They don't know that if they choose not to have this faith, their family's going to completely shun them later. They don't know. They're it's a just, lifelong contract, right? Yeah. And I think they're just little kids that want to make their parents and all their friends happy. Because mm -hmm. everybody claps and everybody's happy for them. And yeah. they get the response that they think they should have. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. The other thing is the amount of child abuse that goes on within the organization. Mm -hmm that's kind of the thing that really pushed me over the edge is to not only leave the Jehovah's Witnesses, mm -hmm. but also be active in promoting the fact that this is a cult. Mm -hmm. And they absolutely do protect their followers over making sure that those children are okay. So that was one of the, the, the main thing that made me leave. Yeah. Did so. you personally see, you know, anything strange? Uh, with uh, church leaders? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's hypocrisy <laughs> every day. It was do one thing and say another. It was go out drinking with the guys and then people grow a conscience later, but we still go knock on doors and tell people the secret to family happiness. Mm -hmm. And that's all great if you have a, a mission or a project or you're preaching and you think you're going to change lives. But don't sin on Saturday and then preach on Sunday. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I guess that's what bugged me. You know of circumstances where they've drank way too much. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's to people looking in yeah. right now to the JW organization, they look at it and go, well, you just got drunk a couple times. Mm -hmm. What's the big deal? Yeah. But to witnesses, they follow such a strict order that yeah. it's completely different once you're inside mm -hmm. because... You have to have a close net of friends that do all the things you want to do. And if some of them are wrong, as long as they do them too, nobody ever gets ratted out. Yeah. Unless somebody grows a conscience. So <laughs> hypocrisy, yeah. It's, it's a big there. deal. It's there. Hmm. So why are you no longer a Jehovah's Witness anymore? Yeah, what made you want to stop being one? I think it started out probably two, three years ago. I started to really question. Mm -hmm. And it was partially the beard. <laughs> because Jehovah's Witnesses are known for you're not allowed to have a beard. Yeah. Um, within it, anyways, people looking in are probably like, what? You're not allowed to have a beard. Why, why would that, that be? like? Yeah, yeah. Why does that matter? Mm -hmm. But for Witnesses, it does matter. Yeah. Because they say, oh, well, he looks bad in Jehovah's eyes. Or mm -hmm. when you go knocking on doors, it doesn't look right. You think it looks worldly? Exactly. They're yeah. terminologies. So that was one thing, growing the beard. Um and that's why I have it to this day is because mm. it's kind of, I like it mm -hmm. and I'm going to be me. Yeah. And if they had a problem with it, I guess they had a problem with it. But yeah, so the beard, the other thing that made us leave was the Royal Commission. Mm. It 
it's just the it's kind of like the anchor that it just really bugs me how they treat kids so what was the royal commission like what was it about it that got your eyes opened just the i started out googling different things about witnesses and you just mm-hmm. click on news and that's and forbidden that, to do by the way yeah <laughs> yeah and then i uh i clicked on news on on google i just typed in jw hmm. hit news and that came up hmm. and it said pedophile case and me having a at the time like an eight-year-old and a seven-year-old was a big deal to me so now they're 10 and 11 and you go back and watch those videos and you see that people people are just covering up like repeat offenders that are raping little kids Mm -hmm. and they would rather say oh it looks bad on jehovah's name than to actually get these pedophiles or these molesters first the help they need because they're sick Mm -hmm. second criminally charge them or deal with it in a way that not just witnesses are protected but people throughout the world are protected and that Mm -hmm. was proven in the royal commission that they mainly cared about the people on the inside because mm-hmm. the few that did get disfellowshipped it never went to the authorities because mm-hmm. they didn't care about the people on the outside and what is the two witness rule like what would that what does that mean to people who don't understand yeah, the yeah. Witness doctrine? so the two witness rule it's basically if somebody let's say a little girl or a little boy gets abused mm-hmm. if there's not a second witness to the crime the crime didn't happen yeah and that's what bugs me is because hmm. if you think about it how many rapists or pedophiles do you know are gonna say hey come with me and witness this right none of them zero <laughs> right because yeah. they'd be in jail of course right it's sick and twisted so yeah. to have a little child that is defenseless have to be told oh that didn't happen to mm-hmm. you because of the two witness rule yeah, mm-hmm. wow it's ridiculous yeah um just uh, curious about mm-hmm. the beard why do you think that so many jehovah's witnesses you know if they were to look at you just in your physical appearance you know that they would instantly judge you just for having a beard i think it's funny because when you knock on doors and somebody comes to the door with a beard you still preach to them you still treat them nice but inside the organization if you have a beard you're instantly looked at as worldly Mm -hmm. and in the research i've done on that i've had brothers say that basically if you have a beard you're either on your way out of the truth or you're on your way in Mm. right so you're a weak spiritual person yeah and it's just a it's just another one of those things that they determine your appearance labeling exactly you know, judgmental they don't they don't see the inner heart it's all about the outer appearance right exactly and yeah. that's why they get away with what they get away with yeah because it's all about the appearance and not what's right here or who you know right exactly yeah mm-hmm. and um what made you start having doubts honestly like we're in the information age if you really want to find out about something it's you there. can yeah so from a scientific mindset it just it started to not add up hmm. things like prophecies failing beth serene and i was like well what is that and at first i was like well that's apostate <laughs> i won't look at that yeah right and then i looked it up on my own on my computer <laughs> and i was like holy cow there's so much out there yeah. help me to to wake up and to realize that maybe there is something more to this hmm. that it is a cult and not actually a religion and when you say that you woke up would you consider yourself brainwashed then yeah absolutely mm-hmm. because you're only taught from a certain doctrine you're only taught from a certain um, amount of material and i feel as the Jehovah's Witness organization has evolved. Yeah. It's actually not become about serving Jehovah or Jesus anymore. It's become about serving members of the governing body. Anymore. Yeah, that's true. And that's yeah. the thing. Like nobody can really notice that they're brainwashed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How do you I, tell a brainwashed person they're brainwashed? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Like if you if you were to go to a family member or a friend and say you're brainwashed, you're in a cult. Mm-hmm. 
or even if you say it in a nice way, it's just not going to work because they're going to look at you and say, well, that's Satan's propaganda. That's Satan's right. lies. Yeah. Are you're trying you... to weaken my faith or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So are you disfellowshipped or disassociated? I'm actually neither. Yeah. Okay. I've, I've never uh, been disfellowshipped yet, um, but I've also never filled out a, like I've never sent a disassociation letter in. Um, I put in a letter saying I no longer want to serve as a ministerial servant. At that time I had a beard. <laughs> um, so I guess it took pressure off them, took the easy way out for them. They didn't have to discipline me because I stepped aside. Um, but yeah, I've never never faced any any discipline like that. Yeah. Are you are you interested in going back? No. So you're not just fellowship and you're not you didn't send out a, a letter. No. Are you do you still have a relationship with your family then? Um, it's strained. Mm -hmm. It's almost as if I may as well be disfellowshipped. Um, they don't really talk to me unless they need to talk to me. Right. I try to instigate through text just to keep a, a relationship going. Yeah. But for the most part, it's either a response like a week later, oh, sorry, didn't get back to you, didn't see your text. When... They talk to everybody else through their phone. They yeah. must have seen the text. Um, but family members that aren't witnesses or that have left the Jehovah's Witnesses, mm -hmm. those relationships are actually starting to thrive again. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. So how do you, do you feel like your relationship with your Jehovah's Witness relatives has taken a hit because you don't want to be Absolutely. in the religion anymore? Yeah. yeah. I think it's one of the only, um, not even religions, but cults mm -hmm. in the world that they actually destroy families yeah. because if you're a Christian in any other dom denomination, if you decide to be a Lutheran or a Baptist or whatever it may be, mm -hmm. your parents still love you. They still yeah. have a conversation with you yeah. and vice versa. You still love your parents. Mm -hmm. Whereas this just cuts all ties. Yeah. So yeah, it's horrible. Yeah, it's hard. So um, I have a question. How has your relationship with your wife been impacted by this since you don't want to be a witness anymore it started out at first i quit going and then i didn't really want my kids to go yeah and then she went a couple times by herself and she just said it felt weird and she didn't want to do it alone hmm. so we kind of left it at that but i'd always throw tidbits at her like do you actually believe this what do you think about this i never really hit her with like hard points because mm -hmm. i knew at the same time she she might just close up and just become mad and upset and frustrated, yeah. right? And deem it, oh, it's apostate literature. Mm -hmm. So I just, I'd share little little tidbits here and there. And eventually she just went, holy crap. And mm -hmm. she kind of had an eye opening as well, mm -hmm. right? And I mean, she was raised as a witness her whole life from the time she was born to the time she's 32 now, yeah. right? So it was even harder probably. Yeah, yeah, it was hard for her to actually come to grips with Mm -hmm. that length of her life being gone right yeah. never being able to celebrate a birthday or open up presents on christmas and think santa brought them as a little kid like mm -hmm. just little things that we take for granted not more importantly but equally my my kids since leaving the witnesses they have friends in school that are true friends mm -hmm. they have um, they've flourished in school. They're doing better in school. Their social skills are better. That's awesome. They have kids within the community that they play with. Mm -hmm. Even at home, my son's more vocal. He's <laughs> more, he's just fun. He's him more all opinion. of a sudden, right? Yeah. He doesn't, uh, he's not confined to you better be this way or else. Mm -hmm. So I think our kids have thrived. That's awesome. Yeah. And, um, you know, the stereotype is when you leave, mm -hmm. there's this belief that you just become this evil you know, demonic type person. Mm -hmm. But uh, how have you changed as a person since leaving the whole thing? I think, and I think my wife will attest to it too, that I'm a lot more relaxed person. I used to get uptight at the littlest things just mm -hmm. because I was living a life that wasn't me, right? So little things would set me off. Yeah. And not angry, crazy, but just put you in a bad mood mm -hmm. because I didn't have enough service time or... I didn't give this many comments at the meeting yeah. or just thing regular life of a witness that would put you in a bad mood. But now we live our lives mm -hmm. the way, the best way we know how, raising our kids. Um, 
taking them on holidays, mm-hmm. having fun in the yard, throwing mm-hmm. the football with my son, going <laughs> to sports games. That's nice. Yeah, so for for witnesses watching right now, it's not like when you leave the Jehovah's Witnesses, your life is doomed to failure. Yeah. You're going to die at Armageddon. You'll mm-hmm. never be successful at anything you do. You're going to yeah. be miserable. Those are all lies that they teach you so you never leave. Control tactics. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And that's the thing, like, they teach in the organization that they have the best family structure, everyone's happy, but oftentimes, like, we all know, I mean, we were Jehovah's Witnesses, yeah. that you have a, so much stress, and the priority isn't your relationships, it's the organization, it's the truth, it's, you know, mm-hmm. the bigger picture. So a lot of times your family actually gets the back burner, and things actually, the yeah. family isn't happy, and yet you guys yeah. left, and your family's happier now. Yeah, like, I think that we were... As a family unit, we were a lot more stressed out mm-hmm. just as to what we had to attain each month to be a good model Jehovah's Witness. Yeah. And now we focus more about the relationships inside our home mm-hmm. than everybody else that's outside watching. That's awesome. Right? Yeah, I feel like uh, one of the reasons why many Jehovah's Witness families are not happy is because there's kind of like these unrealistic expectations mm-hmm. and they're not natural yeah. you know, and they're not very good for family happiness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the structure, the women are lower. Yeah. Women have a final say no matter what. Yeah. And so things are always going to clash like that. Yeah. Well, it's, it almost sends people into a state of depression Yeah. and they don't even really understand why it's happening. No. But it's because, like you said, it's unattainable expectations. Yeah, you can't let your kids be who they want. They want to go to college and be this when they grow up. They yeah. want to be this. You know, none of that is allowed. Exactly. Right? So you're stunting your children. And you Yeah, know. it's not... It Just all the way around the board, it doesn't make sense. It's not healthy. <laughs> it's not healthy for families. Yeah. It's not healthy as an individual. Yeah. It's a mind-controlling cult. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. And we are happy as a family to be out of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would love to have the rest of my family out of it. Of course, yeah. Because they're my family. I still love them. But at the same time, I can't choose what they're going to do. Um, so you do realize what you're doing right now, what the implications can be um, by making this video. Oh, for sure. Mm-hmm. To me, I understand that chances are I'm going to get a letter in the mail. They'll say you have to appear at a judicial hearing, which is basically you sit with two or three elders and they tell you that they ask you if you still believe in the governing body. And if you say no, you're deemed an apostate or the rhetoric around that. Um, But at the same time, even though I thought I had really good friends within the organization, if they're going to leave me at the drop of a hat because my faith changed, it tells me they're not my true friends. Yeah, they don't love you unconditionally. Exactly, right? right? Like we've we've talked about before with mm-hmm. with my wife that you you can have a pet that loves you, mm-hmm. and if you change your faith, does the dog all of a sudden say I don't love you anymore? No, they love you the same. That animal still loves you. Yeah. Why? Because the dog isn't brainwashed. <laughs> So, yeah. so you know the consequences of this. Um, so then, why do it then? I guess it's just it's a it's a way to be active. Not like it's an onslaught towards witnesses, because that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to help people realize that this is not a religion. This is not a Christian religion. Mm-hmm. This is a cult. Mm-hmm. It controls not only you, it controls your mind, it controls everything about your life. And if I get this fellowship for it, I probably will. And I'm, I've come to terms with that, I understand mm-hmm. that. My family's already limited their contact with me. I get that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the way that witnesses do things. Mm-hmm. But if this video helps save a hundred little kids, even one little kid mm-hmm. that's being molested, if it gets out there that this needs to be dealt with, mm-hmm. not just in Australia, but in Canada, in the US, around the world, it needs to be addressed, yeah. then I'd rather save other lives for the mm-hmm. sake of my relationships going sideways. Well, okay. I think it's more important. Yeah, that's really yeah. commendable of you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And um, obviously, like, even though you're not a Jehovah's Witness anymore, that doesn't mean you don't love your family the same or that you no. don't have good morals anymore, right? Yeah, it's actually, you love them more. Yeah. 
because you realize what you've gone through yeah and how they're still in it and they're still tied down they have the thumb on them and you love them even though you don't share the same beliefs as them exactly right? i've always said you could be a buddhist you could be a monk you could be whatever denomination you want to be mm -hmm. you're my mom you're my dad i love you yeah but unfortunately it's not it's always not the same the, the same for you exactly right? yeah if it's a Jehovah's Witness that's watching this right now and they're obviously watching because they must be curious or something, yeah. what would you tell them? Do your own research. Mm -hmm. Don't take the don't take this video and go, oh I gotta go talk to the elders about it and they can give me the answer. Yeah. Because they're not gonna give you the answer. They're gonna give you the line that they've been told to say. So do your own research. Mm -hmm. Dig into it. Mm -hmm. Find out for yourself. Like when the witnesses say make the truth your own, <laughs> actually do that this time. Yeah. Right? Like, that's true. actually dig into it and find out if it's for you. Mm -hmm. Don't just label this video as, oh, he's an apostate. Oh, he's dangerous. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not dangerous. We're not dangerous. Yeah. Right? It's more Same about. Same person, right? Yeah. <laughs> you're about the person of the heart. So dig in, do your research, keep an open mind. We were raised to believe that we had the most love. We were so special for believing we had so much knowledge of what others believed and how wrong they had it. We considered it our mission, a duty to go speak to strangers at their door and discuss with them how wrong they were on what they believed, but feared nothing more powerful than death than to question our own belief system. Anyone who questioned the never proven special powers of the governing body was to be vanquished immediately. What we know now is considered too dangerous on the minds of the ever hardworking Jehovah's Witnesses, so they can remain just that, ever hardworking Jehovah's Witnesses who do not know that they are working for free for a multi-billion dollar corporation. To keep their followers from ever knowing, they have separated us from the only family and friends we've ever known, calling us mentally diseased and dangerous criminals creating an atmosphere of paranoia among its members to never read or watch anything critical of the organization, to never question the governing body, to abstain from having any independent thoughts. We have been thrown away, discarded, considered dead in the eyes of family. But we will not stay down. We are not mentally diseased. We are not drug-infested, lying criminals. We are human beings with the capacity for real unconditional love and support for our fellow former witnesses. We have and will continue to prove that we are thrivers. We are survivors. We have love for our fellow human beings and we will not stay down. We will all rise up from this. <laughs>